Welcome to the Indie Production Cinematic Series. In today's video, we're going to learn on how to use multiple webcams to capture complex motion. This is the SOS channel, and here we learn cool things about Computer G. This video, we will see what software we're going to use and why, if multi camera is overkill or is actually better, what we'll need for capturing, what am, am I using in my captures, how to calibrate how to capture and export. So for this workflow, we're going to use mocap for all which costs $100. It's, uh, this is the price in Brazil, which is actually still pretty affordable. And we're going to use it because it runs sort of in real time. You know, we don't need to wait for calibration for we know if it's working or not. We, we will have like live feedback on the interface can see the points on the viewport before exporting we can check if everything is okay before doing our performance is multi-camera overkill nowadays we can capture with just one camera and in some cases it, it's pretty good and all that but depending on the kind of motion you want to do like this one in this video that i captured a while ago some motions will just explode if you try it you know if you turn too much your limbs are going to go crazy depending on the algorithm i know there's quick magic now that is doing really good capture but for more spatial captures the multi-camera view is the go-to because it gives the the best result in terms of going around and also the affordability like it's a hundred dollars for more for all so the camera I'm using is a Speedo MF934H. It's a 60 FPS camera. It has manual focus. This is really important. You don't want your camera to be out of focusing you while you're captured because this will introduce problems. And it's 60 FPS, 100 FOV. And that that's like almost the limit for distortion in the edges of the camera. And it, it has this cool like for support and it has a hole for you to put up support and another thing i use is this little piece to put on my tripod so then i can turn my webcam sideways it, it, it's so easy to do it this way it, i can move it whatever the way i want and it's, it's just super handy and it goes right on the camera and then on the tripod and the last thing you need is uh, besides the tripod you need a active USB cable so you can extend your cameras from your PC and it has to be an active cable otherwise it will not work because the data transferring is way high so you need one of those this is my tripod I have two of them they go a little higher than me but I usually use them at shoulder level it gives better results in general and this is the board I printed it super big because when it's small, it sometimes had difficulty to, to detect it. So I, I printed a huge one. First, I'm using two 1080p cameras. And the first thing I like to do is to put them in 9060 by 544. And they are in this configuration. Be same thing. Apply. And sometimes we get some little crashes we apply again the first thing now we need to do is to tell the computer what are the camera specs so it knows its lens and stuff like that you know distortion and all the thing so when it compares two cameras it will know what to do to triangulate you in 3d space so the first thing we need to do is go into the mocap for all github page and in how to capture calibrate cameras and execute calibration first we need the intrinsic parameters the camera specs and its lens information so i'll be holding it the same way i would like if it was on the stand right looking at me and this is one of the things i like about mocap for all is because it will make some sounds to to show me what is <laughs> what is happening <laughs> like if when the calibration is done it will make like a tick so like bang drag the software to the side and start the calibration and record the board 
and then it, it, it now it did the tick sound. So then I would just put it in place. Another thing you can do is you can save the configuration. I already have them here, but I will just save the new one. It's speedo, and then a 60, 504, 1, and left camera. Just so I know in my space which camera it is. Because maybe, I don't know, maybe they have little differences. On the board, you need to measure this square and put it in centimeters in this region on the config tab. So, the next thing we need to do is the 3D calibration. So, the software knows where we are in space. And I have a problem with my monitors covering a lot of my floor right now. But basically, we need to get the board and have it see being seen by both cameras at the same time. We just show the board to the camera and hit the other calibration. And we have a couple options here. I will run it on GPU. Tensor, Tensor RT doesn't change too much, it's pretty cash. You can capture hands, but I really don't like it. it we'll learn other methods to use hand captures in here. And you can have the mannequin, but it will do a retarget and it, the character might look weird. So I only care right now about the bones. Like if the bones look good, the points of the body look good. It, that's all I care about right now. So I'll just turn him off and have draw tracking points on mode. You can use speed plus to check if it, the capture is good or not and all that. And all you have to do is start capture. Here is the animation in Blender. Uh, let's have a play. You can say it's pretty. I think it's pretty consistent. I really like it. Of course, we need to fix a couple things, but overall, it's really solid. Uh, and for the price, uh, Mocapro is just a hundred dollars. And also, in some future videos, I will show you how to clean up, how to enhance. We're going to use Cascado, we're going to see some little Houdini workflows to do some cool stuff. Maybe if you don't use it, but it's good to watch to know that these stuff exist. And the animation I recorded in this video will be available on my Ko-Fi, so you can check it out. Uh, the link will be in the description, and I see you guys in the next video.